الحمد للہ رب العالمین وصل اللہ وسلم علی نبینا محمد وعلا علیہ وصحبہ وسلم اما بعد احبت فی اللہ in another authentic narration it was narrated from Saeed ibn Jubair رضي الله تعالى عنه that Abdullah ibn Mughaffal was sitting beside a nephew of his the nephew hurled a pebble and he told him not to do that and he said the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had forbidden that he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said it cannot be used for hunting and it cannot carry uh, it cannot harm an enemy but it may break a tooth or put out an eye his ne- he said his nephew hurled another pebble and he, Abdullah ibn Mughaffal said, I tell you that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam forbade that and you go and hurl another pebble, I will never speak to you again. Ahabat in this narration, similar to the hadith of Abdullah ibn uh, Umar radiallahu ta'ala who said, that the women should not be prevented from going to the masjid and the man said I by Allah I will not allow the women to go to the masjid and Abdullah bin Umar said radiallahu ta'ala anhu said I tell you that the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to not prohibit the women and you say you will prohibit the women so this other narration that we just related or just uh, read similar to that narration shows us how the Sahaba were Haris ala Sunnah they were very strict and enthusiastic about the Sunnah they had zeal about practicing the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and that which they perceived to go against that, they totally rejected. So here, Abdullah bin Mughaffal, radiallahu ta'ala, and who was with one of his nephews, the nephew did an act that he warned him about. Then he repeated that act. So he said, I will never speak to you again. Showing the stern love for the sunnah and the rejection of bid'ah. That's the purpose that this hadith, the main purpose of that hadith being in this chapter is illustrating for us the strong love for the sunnah and the strong rejection of that which goes against the sunnah. So, Allah, avoid those methodologies those madhabs, those other ways and paths which take you away from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَنْ أَحْدَثَ فِي أَمْرِنَا هَذَ مَا لَيْسَ مِنْهُ فَهُوَ رَدْ Whoever innovates in these affairs of ours will have it rejected. So, innovation in the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is rejected. And those people who practice innovation and make it their their minhaj in their way. That means many of their acts with per- pertinent to relevant to those innovations is rejected. And that if they are from Ahl Bid'ah, then they're not from Ahl Sunnah. And if they're from Ahl Bid'ah, they're not from Ahl Athar and Ahl Hadith and from Ahl Atayfata Mansura, you know, the safe sect. 
And that's who we want to be from. Who wants to go to the hellfire? Who wants to go against what the Messenger of Allah said was our salvation? The Prophet said, If Tarakatil Yahud ala ith was sabain firka, if Tarakatil Nasara ala ith natain was sabain firka, was a Taftariku have he umma ala talatha was sabain firka, kulla half in Nara la Wahida, kulla men here ya Rasulullah, kala men can ala mithuma can alayhi was habi alium, or came a kala nebiu sallallahu alayhi was sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi was sallam said, The Jews were breaking the 71 sects. The Christians in the 72 sects, my ummah in the 73 sects, all of them in the fire except one. They said, who are they, Ya Rasulullah? He said, those who follow my way and the way of my companions. So stick into the jama'ah, stick into the sunnah, stick into ahla sunnah is the way for success. And that is in the smallest and minor affairs as well as the major affairs. But with that warning, it does not mean that we reject. Every time someone makes a mistake or a fault or what we perceive as a mistake and a fault, that we reject them and we say that they're from Ahla Bidah or they're from Ahla Kufr or Ahla Zandaka or what have you. La. That's not the way of Ahla Sunnah. That's not the Tarbiyah of the Prophet ﷺ, that's not what he was encouraging us to do. So be cautious in your love for the Sunnah not to have be extreme. The Prophet ﷺ said, Iyakum wa ghalu. Beware of ghalu because it destroyed those who came before you. That extremeness, being going beyond the bounds, the bounds tell you here, the bounds are at this level. But you say, no, I'm gonna go way up here, I'm gonna go beyond that. That's Tijawaz al Had. That's going beyond the bounds. That's not what Islam ordered you to do. So we have to be cautious. Islam does not destroy us, but it builds us. And it builds our character. So a person should not always be uh, harsh and extreme towards anyone. But rather, if they're comfortable in their religion by practicing the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with ilm and fiqh and basira, meaning with knowledge and understanding and insight or wisdom, then that should be a source of light and comfort. And they know how to deal when they're in a situation with someone who has mistakes or when a situation from someone from Ahl Sunnah who has mistakes or someone from Ahl Bidah when they have their mistakes they know how to deal with these issues so it's imperative for us to know and understand and practice to the best of our ability in accordance with Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and avoid sex and avoid new understandings and avoid new manahij and new forms of da'wah that doesn't conform to that foundation which was established by Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions radiallahu ta'ala anhum and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam